Hello everyone, if you guys are having a great day, it is April 29th, and Tim back with another video. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, next week's uh, severe weather threat. Uh, the SPC has already issued a, a few day 4 through 8 Alex, um, and yeah, so it looks like we're going to see a, a start the start of a new severe weather event on Sunday, and I'm going to see day 4 and day 5, which is Sunday and Monday, we have 15% uh, risks. On Sunday, we have one out for... Pretty much most of Mississippi. And then on day five, it's centered kind of right around Dallas Fort Worth. So that looks to be the start of our next severe weather event. That's going to be kind of the main focus of today's video. We're going to talk about next week a lot. Uh, and I'm also going to talk about what's going on right now because today we do have a marginal risk with uh, some ongoing thunderstorms. Uh, so, yeah, now, real quick before I start the video, uh, please leave a comment. And uh, I I'm thinking about. Uh, bringing back Georgia forecasts again, because I kind of enjoyed doing that. But I don't know if I should do it on this channel or do another channel strictly for Georgia forecasts. Because uh, this channel isn't really for that. Um, and I wouldn't really be t do, not doing any... I, I would still be posting daily with this channel. Uh, I would just be doing videos probably twice twice a week for the Georgia Forecast channel. Uh, but just leave a comment and tell me if you would like me to do that. Um, but yeah, so let's actually get started with the video. So this is the current uh, IR for the whole U.S. You can see across the east and the south, we have a pretty large storm system. Uh, the northeast, we do have some thunderstorms right now in areas of New York and PA. And then we have a lot of gusty storms down through this region. And some severe weather in this area. The very interesting storm in central Louisiana right there. Um, and then we have another area up over here. I, I, that extends from Illinois up into Michigan. We actually, have, we actually have a severe thunderstorm warning as I'm making this for, I think it's like to the right to the southwest of Chicago. It's for, we have a lot, we have a lot of gusty showers in that area associated with this front uh, up there. Not really a severe thunderstorm risk it's more or less kind of it's just really associated with the coal front it's not exactly the the storms are just helping to support more strong winds in that area um just the general thunderstorm out for that area right now though but pretty active uh this afternoon or actually this evening um let's zoom in on that on central louisiana right there i'm not going to get gr2 up for this but we do have an interesting cell right there, so let's just get a composite radar. You can see it looks like a, just maybe a, that, that kind that somewhat looks like a super slash. Let's get radar scope here. Uh, this will help it a little bit. Uh, so it's not even severe warning. It's, it's right over. It's right over Alexandria. And yeah, now that I'm zoomed into it, it doesn't fully look like a. Organized supercell and reflectivity. I don't, it's not. I don't think it's a supercell, but definitely a strong storm. Most likely, with some damaging winds, maybe some small hail. Um, with that, but uh, yeah. So and before we really start going out to next week, uh, tomorrow we do a marginal risk for southern Texas. We're not going to be really looking at that. And then on day three, this is Saturday. We have a marginal risk for areas of Texas and Louisiana. We'll look at this most likely tomorrow, but I'm not looking at it today. I want to focus on next week. Uh, we're going to start on, on Sunday, right here, because Sunday is when we had that 15% for Mississippi. So let's go ahead and go out to Sunday on the latest GFS run. Uh, we can see the GFS has a nice-looking storm system in this area. That's going to be kind of supporting this. Uh, and let's take a look at uh, the upper-level winds here. So 500 millibar is looking looking pretty good. Uh, we can see right over that area looks to be the best. So 500 millibar is another important uh, area we want to look at. It's 850. Uh, we can see streaks right over that area, which is what we want to see. Um, and the last thing we're really going to look at with this before we look at things like instability and dues and stuff is vorticity. Um, yeah, we can see, I wouldn't really call it an upper level low, it's kind of just a little short wave, 
continue to bring you this severe weather on Sunday. Um, but overall, it doesn't look ter- too bad. Uh, let's go over to instability now. We have a, we have a, Monday looks to be very interesting for the West, though, and really for the whole South. I think we'll see severe weather maybe all the way over into the Carolinas or the chance of some severe weather. Sunday evening, not a lot of instability. Most of the instability is limited in this area, but we can take some soundings up here. And, I mean, not great for some severe weather. Very elevated. Overall, not great. Um, and then in, in our... Uh, risk. We don't really have a whole lot of instability. Uh, we go later into the evening. We don't really get a whole lot of instability. So that could maybe be a limiting factor. And keep in mind, this is off the GFS though. So the GFS sometimes likes to underdo instability. But when we get the NAM, we'll be able to compare it to the GFS. Oh uh, no. If you look at lapse rates though, we have very steep, or not very steep lapse rates. We have very steep lapse rates to the west. Lapse rates are kind of trash in our 15% area, but further to the west, we have very steep lapses. Uh, we take a sounding in eastern Texas. Very, yeah, that's trash. That cap is, or that capping inversion is garbage. Uh, take one further to the north. It's kind of trash once again. Very capped environment further to the west. Uh, but SPC has a 15% off for that area. I think we'll see a severe weather threat it doesn't look insanely good, though. I think Monday is going to be when we start the world. It starts to look interesting. I do think we'll see severe weather Sunday, likely. As we get to day one, I think we will see a slight risk. So that, that means Sunday, the day one outlook on Sunday, which will be, of course, for Sunday, which is the day four outlook today, I think it's going to be slight. Uh, that's kind of my opinion. But, uh, yeah, so now let's go ahead and go out to... Monday. Monday looks to be very interesting for really the whole South. So, uh, Monday 21Z. It's this mid afternoon when we have peak heating. Lots of instability. Four to 5,000 Cape in some areas. Cape or instability going all the way up into Illinois. And I think this area down, I think that's really, that's a big area, but I think really this area here will be the area to watch on Monday. And let's just take a few soundings for eastern Texas here. Large hail is going to really be a problem with this sounding here. Uh, tornado threat doesn't look good. Uh, you're not going to see a tornado with these shear profiles. But the, the large hail threat really concerns me on Monday in Texas. And yesterday, by the way, we had three significant cities. That got hit by hail. Uh, the northern side of Fort Worth got some. Uh, the northern side, the northern and western side of San Antonio got hail. And then Norman got slammed. Uh, very costly disaster uh, last night. And Monday looks to could be kind of a continuation of that in really the same area. Maybe a little, little, little bit further to the east on Monday. Uh, but large hail threat definitely is going to be here. We have, an, we have an extreme cape or extreme instability, and really steep lapse rates. Uh, overall, I think we're going to see some significant sized hail in eastern Texas. Yeah, these, this is some really good soundings for hail. Even all the way up in the Missouri, I think we could see a hail threat, a little bit of a capped environment up here, but that's that. I don't think the tornado threat looks good on Monday at all. In fact, let's go over to uh, 500 millibar winds. Mm. That, that doesn't look bad. Let's take a sounding right here. Yeah, we have a little bit of turning, 2% risk. Uh, northeastern Texas there. So, take a sounding in northern Arkansas. That's a, that's a 2% sounding. I do think we're going to see a tornado risk. I think it'll mainly be in this region here. Uh, but large hail threat will looks likely extend out of this. Not that far east, really, but I do think we're going to see a large hail threat. Um, take a sounding further to the east, though, in, in the south. So this is this is in Alabama. We have a lot of instability. Uh, shear profiles don't look great, but not terrible. And likely a 2% sounding. Overall, a large hail threat with this. Not, as lo- not, not a great hail threat like we had in Texas, but... 
you would still see the chances of some hail and foul. You take one even further east. Let's take one in around Macon and Georgia, or Macon, Georgia. Uh, Instability is a little low. Two uh, percent risk with this also. I do think we're gonna see a severe weather threat really for this whole area. It's kind of a weird shape. Uh, let me re redraw that. Maybe a little bit further to the east in the Carolinas if we see instability or enough instability in that area. Instability in Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina is kind of questionable, but further to the west, I, I do think we're going to end up having a marginal or a slight risk maybe. I do think we could even see an enhance as we get towards day one. It's kind of a risky call, but I think we're going to have a pretty significant ale threat if the models keep with us. Uh... And I do think we eventually could. I do think it'll, it'll, it'll definitely be slight by day one, uh, Monday next week, uh, Monday, May 3rd. But it could go enhanced also. I do think we could see a marginal as far east as South Carolina, maybe North Carolina. So uh, that is Monday next week. Let's go ahead and go up to Tuesday because Tuesday looks interesting once again. A few things to notice here. Uh, 500 millibar winds, so we can see our... Wave is right here. Of course, with this, you want to look at the Mid-Atlantic, South. And, yeah, so let's go to Severe Weather. Let's we'll look at Instability, and we'll take a few soundings. So, Instability here. Once again, on Tuesday, we have a ton of it going all the way up into Tennessee, Kentucky. And up like this, I would say we have a Severe Weather risk as far north as the Northeast. It sort of looks similar today in the areas we're seeing the risk for Severe Weather. Uh, of course, I do think it's going to be a little more significant next Tuesday. Uh, this is May 4th, by the way. So I do think it could see a little bit more of a severe weather threat than we have today. With this sounding, that's a 2 to 5% sounding. This is, we're not going to really focus on tornado risk, but shear profiles with this aren't bad. Extreme instability and decent lapse rates. I think we're going to see a little bit less of a large hail threat, but I still think we're going to see a slight risk as we get closer to day one. Five days out still, but I do think we, we could see that. And with this sounding, not as good with the tornado threat, but definitely still a severe weather threat. Uh, that's likely a slight risk sounding. Uh, let's go all the way up into Tennessee now. Uh, and the tornado, the tornado threat with this is questionable, but 2% sounding for sure, most likely. Doesn't look great, but you could see something out of this. And... A little bit less of a large hail threat, but definitely still a severe weather threat. A lot of instability next week. That's going to play a big part in this. And all the way in the North Carolina, we have a ton of instability. Maybe even a severe weather threat over there if we have a good source of lift. And then even up in the New York, we have instability. So let's get a sounding up there. Uh, not not really a tornado threat this sounding. This is far out, though, so... Uh, it's, we're not really going to look at the tornado threat a whole lot, but definitely I think we're going to see a severe weather risk maybe as far up into the northeast on Tuesday. Uh, maybe it's a pretty large area we could be watching. Uh, and then we're not going to talk about these next days a whole lot. Uh, Wednesday seems like it's going to calm down. Maybe some kind of risk across the southeast. And then I think we're going to see maybe something again on Thursday. Might be a little bit limited. It might be limited to the south, but I think we could see something Thursday and then maybe even into Friday. We have a little bit of instability across Florida and some instability across the across the areas, uh, really upstate South Carolina. That I'll look at that in a second, but I think we'll have a severe weather risk maybe next Friday. Uh, this is far out though, so this is kind of just for fun, but um. Let's take a sounding right here. We have around 651 cape. Uh, okay, this sounding we could see maybe like really nothing. That's not really a good severe sounding. But Friday, I do think we'll see a continued severe weather uh, risk down maybe in Florida. Uh, now, let's look at vorticity and see what kind of... All right, yeah, so that's right. That's right, really right with the low, okay? All right, we have a lot of vorticity. Right there, okay, so that is really the severe weather for the next uh, week. 
Uh, I think next week is going to be pretty active. Uh, I think large hail is going to be the main threat uh, for many areas. And I think damaging winds will come second with the tornado risk coming last. The tornado risk next week, I do think we're going to see a few tornadoes, but the tornado risk next week doesn't look to be extraordinary or anything. I think we're going to see large hail and damaging winds and maybe a few tornadoes. I'll be out there about this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, but yes, goodbye.